Because nobody's like you. Now in this section, we're going to cover three quick tips to keep you in alignment with your authentic nature in your authentic thriving zone. So the first one is to make decisions on desire rather than fear. And as always, I like to give an example. And this particular example comes from Tosha Silver's book, Outrageous Openness, which was recommended to me by a colleague. And I just think it's a great book. So she gives an example of a friend of hers who lived in, the, in California. I'm not sure exactly where in California, other than it was in an earthquake zone. And this friend of hers lived with this constant fear that he was going to get caught into an earth, caught in an earthquake, that he was going to lose his home, his possessions, his family, his life, get injured or whatever the case may be. And it was just a fear that he carried with him so much so that he began researching safe places to live across the United States. And he did a lot of extensive research and identified those zones that were least likely to be affected by earthquakes or tornadoes or hurricanes, etc., cetera, et cetera. And he identified a small town in Washington that seemed from all of the research he'd done to be a very safe place to live from natural disasters. And he just up and moved, uprooted his family and moved to this area of Washington. And within just a few months, the long dormant volcano of Mount St. Helens erupted. He was fine, his family was fine, but he made a decision right then and there that he was never again going to make a decision based on fear rather than desire. And he uprooted his family again and they moved right back to California where they were actually all a lot happier. So keep that in mind. And the second piece of this, just in case you're having a little trouble determining whether or not a certain thing, a certain situation, a certain activity, a job, a relationship, whatever the case may be, might be in alignment with your authentic nature or not, I'm gonna share with you another tip that Martha Beck recommends. Now, I've talked about her in previous classes. She's a famous life coach with two degrees from Harvard. She writes an article every single month in Oprah's O Magazine, and I think she's great. And so a very simple tool that she provides that I have used myself is when in doubt, again, pay attention to the wisdom of your body. And here is a very simple way to do it. Although you're gonna do it standing up, I happen to be sitting, but I will demonstrate sitting, okay? So you just stand up and you present this situation. You can say it out loud, you can say it in your mind's eye, but simply say, is blank good for me? And if your body is telling you that this is something you should go for, you're gonna find yourself just moving forward into it slightly. And if your body is telling you, stay away, don't go there, you're gonna find your body moving back just a little bit away from it or towards it. So that's just a really simple, quick way to get some answers when you have a decision to make and you're not quite sure. Now, the third thing I wanna say in this section, because I am so guilty of this myself. Now, you know how I'm saying to stay in the thriving zone, you always wanna be doing something that scares you just a little, right? Well, Here's another fine line to, to draw at times. I think women possibly in Western culture are really prone to this. Busy, busy, busy. We're addicted to busyness. In fact, sometimes it almost seems like it's a badge of pride or something when people are talking about how hectic their schedules are and how full their days are and they don't have time to get enough sleep. Well, that's garbage. It really is, but I can just say that because I'm so prone to it myself. So be very aware of constantly taking steps towards your next authentic goal, which we're gonna talk about a lot in the next brainstorming session, versus just keeping your calendar full because you're addicted to busyness. And with that, this is what is not busyness. Scheduling time for play. Play and laughter and things that bring you joy. 
Now for me, that might be playing the piano. You know I like to do my collages. I love to cook and spend time in the kitchen. And I also happen to have a partner who is one of my favorite playmates. So I'm really lucky on that end. Um, my fiance, George, is a kite player. So we might just pack up a kite, some tennis rackets, and a can of tennis balls, a frisbee, and go on a walk to the park and bat some tennis balls around, throw a frisbee, he might fly his kite. We have peacocks in our neighborhood that will literally come up and eat from our hands. So we'll make popcorn and go feed the peacocks. We've got squirrels outside. They'll come take nuts from us and stuff like that. So it's really good whether you're by yourself or with someone you love to make sure you have plenty of time for fun and for play. And jot that down and put it in your calendar because it's just as important as anything else to your authentic nature. Because nobody's like you.